Oh, um, I just want, Penelope. I just want you to be the one that's on. I um, know. Okay, no. Debbie. <laughs> We are with who? <laughs> Mark and Roden. Marco Roden and Lisa. And Lisa. Lisa. Right. And we're in Sedona, Cal or California. <laughs> Sedona, Arizona. Arizona. That wasn't me talking. That was the universe. Okay. And we just ran into one of my idols. Okay. So this is like a dream. And he's going to share something he said he's never shared before. Or he, no. Right? This is like cool, cool stuff. Well, we're talking and you mentioned, you know, uh, you were kind enough. Okay. To uh, connect me, you mentioned another, the ma a man who wrote the most awarded book in history, I think, of uh, Fractal Geometry in Nature, Bernard right. Mendelbrot. Right, right. And then I said I received a letter from okay. Dr. Mendelbrot, or Benoit, or whatever you want to call him. And, uh, and what happened was, I lived in uh, San Diego, I couldn't afford the rent, you know, who can now? And uh, so I moved to Rosarito Beach, and but before I did, I had a I printed at FedEx a copy of a two-inch book, my first original monograph, called Aerodynamics and Down the Line Puff Principle Point Energy Creation Physics. It was about 500 illustrations, black and white, done by hand. That almost killed me doing all these by hand, putting the numbers in the toroid number map on the skin of the torus. And so, um, essentially, what I did is I pieced numbers together in such a way as that they reveal that there is such a thing as perfection in the universe mm. and that I found um, a way to observe how energy flows into the future and anyway so um, and the, also the energy that they don't know exi exists today such as spirit because only the magnetic field can respond quick enough to spirit to give slippage and free play but anyway I'll continue so <laughs> I had these hundreds and hundreds of pages book mailed it off to him as a gift okay, okay? And I'm living in Mexico. It must have been there for a couple of years. I don't know how long. Uh, it's too far back now anyway. It goes back over 30 years ago. Nine, 98, late 80s. Uh, and, and so, and I had a P.O. box in San Ysidro. So I went and got my mail, took it home. And one of them was a big package. And it was my book coming back to me. And so... I open up the envelope and there's my original book and there's a letter from Benoit Mandelbrot. I never thought I would ever hear from him. And in the, it's just a, oh, on a little, little, this, yeah. little scrap piece of paper, you know, stick note, whatever. And he says, I'm returning your book back to you. Thank you very much for mailing it to me. He says, I have not been, I, he says, I'm not able to read it or evaluate it. He said, and this, I thought this was hilarious. He said, because this is the biggest book in the history of mathematics. He says, ever since I came out with my book, Fractal Geometry in Nature, I have not had any time. And then he goes, you know, side note. He goes, nay, I've been completely overwhelmed. And I just thought, that must be an understatement, okay? But he was still kind enough to return the book back to me. And mail it. With he a found note. enough time with a note. Yeah. He says, nay, I've been completely overwhelmed. And you know, I so I could, I could, I could have compassion and understand what was going on. It was, a, it was very generous, and it was an honor to receive that note. Uh, you know, he did that work, the, the uh, fractal geometry. He did that all at night because he wasn't able to do it during the day because he had a full-time job at IBM. I think it was. I forgot. And that uh, his work was un, um, well, unsponsored. It wasn't approved. Okay, so that's. That's a cute story about Benoit Mandelbrot. Right. Well, I want to thank you for divulging that story that nobody's ever heard before. Um, in this opportunity, in this beautiful place that we just got here tonight. And this is an unexpected surprise. And I just want to thank you for valuing this moment for us to appreciate you. And understanding how you amazing you, you this said is. You've looked into the Baha'i scriptures. Which so he's going to give you a little Baha'i. The source okay, and origin. The okay, okay. Well, um, Ernie sent me a quote yesterday. Of, of, these are the companions of the Crimson Ark. Oh my goodness. And the red crimson ruby it's, it's, is, has to do with the word of God and, and about the mystic pronunciation of the most great name of God. Now wait, wait. So... Nobody escapes, nobody escapes off the submarine. 
We were talking to the, just now, we were having a very serious conversation <laughs> about how I am, I am so living what I do and so consumed by vortex-based mathematics that, that, what did you say? That nothing else exists. That nothing else exists, <laughs> including, so do you want to give any advice to all those dear there you go. other women in the planet <laughs> that are right now able feeling, to contend like a, with <laughs> a person like this? Imbalance him, because I see that happening oh. right here, right now. Oh. You have anything to say Let's about what it's like to be you? Be they want to know, everybody want to know, the, they want to know the person behind it. Yes. And so here you are. Yes. You're the person a little bit, not completed, but you're behind me. It's so, inspired, it's preeminent, and I can tell you that, um, but you know that. You can no, they want to know about you. What, Wait a minute, behind, can, I, can I ask they know a question? the person behind Vortex Space Not Yeah. They want to know the person behind Exactly. Marco. Kind of like, I don't, I, I really want to know something personal other than the Vortex based mathematics. Because, like, for me and her, it's like we're, we think we're flame mates. Like, we, we existed before we met. Yeah. And we connected in a way to where we knew it as soon as the light switch turned on, right? Yeah. And we know, we know these kind of things, but we can't really prove it other than we just feel it and we understand it and we believe it. Yes. So I'm kind of curious, behind the man of vortex-based mathematics, because I know that's not who you are. Um, I'm not? No. It's, it's, no, it's what's happening to you or what you've learned to teach or whatever the fuck, you'll okay? Sur you'll survive. So, so who, who in, a, in a very vulnerable, personable statement what is it that marco roden really i don't know is or likes or does mm -hmm. other than works his whole mm -hmm. life around vortex based mathematics his whole existence is, is what his whole existence from what i've witnessed is vortex based mathematics? no it's all about beauty okay okay thank you uh, it's all about nature okay beauty and communion with the most, you know, God. Okay, the okay. Most great name of God. Okay. So, so really, it's about what it means to be conscious, to be right. alive. Right. Okay. And to connect with our Creator. Wow. Really, there, that's, that's She wanted me to say a Baha'i quote that I realized which one I want to say now, that I had in playing over and over in, in the back of my mind. It comes out of the Fourth Valley in a book translated by Marzia Gale, written, but it wasn't authored. It was divine revelation, it was divine bestowal, it was an unbroken, unfettered stream of divine utterance of God. And the uh, seven valleys and the four valleys are the mystical progression of a man as a soul to God, and the station and plane that he occupies, with the fourth valley being the highest. <clears throat> and in it, he, once the answer is given, uh, then he throws in the... And it's all linguistic, it's all phonetics. Okay. People don't understand that God's, that the language revealed in the scriptures are, all of them, the religions, major religions, are spiritual languages. The, sa the na letters and the sounds, the syllables embody the essence of what it's describing. But anyway, that's another topic. Um, and here's the quote. See our hearts come open like shells when he reigneth, grace like pearls. And our lives are ready targets when agony's arrows he hurls. And if it were not contrary to the law of the book, I would verily bequeath the portion of my wealth to him who would put me to death. Ye, I would seek to, I would bestow upon him a portion, I would seek to refresh mine eyes with the touch of his hand. But what can I do? I have no possessions and no wealth. And this, this is what God, hath ordained. This is all explaining the Aleph, the Ba and the Ha, the most great name, how to say it in the Persian tongue. He goes, but that's, I won't go into detail. Okay, so, so anyway. You really want to? Okay, well this is a little cantankerous, but I want you guys to know that I'm really just a you're what? I'm just a wallflower. This is oh, yeah. going to be a little cantankerous, but I'm okay, just okay, a wallflower. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see if I can remember the second part. I'm just... If you do the first part, I should be... Okay. Be thou the people of hellfire. 
scripture, be not a hypocrite. This is scripture from okay. Baha'u'llah. Okay. I call it my creed, though Baha'u'llah has many creeds and many scriptures, thousands of verses, books. Um, be thou people of hellfire, but be not a hypocrite. Be thou an unbeliever. But not a plotter. Make thy home in taverns. But tread not the path of the mischief maker. Fear thou God. But not the priest. Give to the executioner thy head. But not thy heart. Let thine abode be under the stone. But seek not the shelter of the cleric. Thus doth the holy reed. In tone its melody. And the nightingale of paradise. Warble its song. So that he may infuse life eternal into the mortal frames of men, impart into the temples of dust the essence of the Holy Spirit and the heavenly life, and draw the transient world through the potency of a single word unto the everlasting kingdom. Oh my God, oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> now, you, you met Marco Roden at Cathedral Rock in oh. Sedona, Arizona. Say bye. Bye bye. Say bye. Bye.